In this video we're looking at the arithmetic logic unit, the control unit, the registers and the buses. In essence we're going to take the lid off the processor and off the memory and have a look at the components inside them and think about how they communicate with each other. So here we are, we've taken the lid off the processor on the left and the memory on the right. This is an abstracted diagram showing you the logical structure of these components. At first glance it looks very complicated but really don't worry about that at this stage because we're going to break down every component and think about how it works and what it does and how it interacts with the other components but it's helpful to see the big picture at this stage. So the first component to notice is the arithmetic logic unit. Now the ALU does exactly what it says, it does arithmetic which means it adds numbers, subtracts numbers, and it does logic. So it can compare binary numbers, see if they're the same, see if one is bigger than the other, and obviously this is very helpful when we're writing programs. The next component to consider is the control unit. Now the control unit sends signals to coordinate how the processor works. It controls how data moves around parts of the CPU and how it moves between the CPU and the memory. The next set of components to consider are the registers. Now the CPU contains many registers and in this diagram we're just going to look at a few of them. Now these are memory locations within the processor itself. They work at very fast speeds and they're used to control the fetch, decode, execute cycle. That is the processor fetches instructions, it decodes them and then it executes them. So let's have a look at each of these registers in turn. Starting with the program counter. Now the program counter has a very important role in the fetch, decode, execute cycle. It stores the address of the next instruction. So if the next instruction that we want to execute is stored in location 0000, then the program counter is going to be storing 0000. The next register is the memory address register. Now this stores the address of the data or the instructions that are to be fetched from or sent to the memory. So again in this case if we are fetching uh, the instruction at address 0000 then what's in the program counter will be copied to the memory address register and that will have 0000 in it too. Now at this point people uh, always ask isn't the memory address register the same as the program counter? Well, no, not really, because the program counter is storing the address of the next instruction so that the processor can keep track of where it is in the program. But the memory address register is the address of the instruction or the data, depending on what is being fetched. So if an instruction is being fetched, then the memory address register and the program counter hold the same value. If what's being fetched is data, then the memory address register will store the address of the data, whereas the program counter will still be storing the address of the next instruction. That's how they're different. The memory data register stores the data that is to be sent to or fetched from the memory. The current instruction register stores the actual instruction that is being decoded and executed. The accumulator stores the result of calculations made by the arithmetic logic unit. And finally we have the interrupt register, which we don't need to worry about at the moment. There are lots of other registers in the processor, and those are outside of the scope of what we're looking at at the moment. The final set of components to consider are what are known as the buses. You've got the address bus, the data bus, and the control bus. And these are the communication channels between the central processing unit, the processor, and the memory, and the other components of the computer system. The address bus carries the address of the instruction or data that's in the memory address register from the processor to the memory. You'll notice that this bus only goes in one direction. It's only the processor that can send an address to the memory. The data bus carries data between the processor and the memory. You'll notice that it's a bi-directional bus, so data can go in either direction. In reality, the name data bus is a little bit misleading because the data bus can, of course, carry the instruction from the memory to the processor as well as data. 
And finally we have the control bus, which sends control signals between the processor and the components. You'll notice that it's a bi-directional bus, so the processor can send control signals to the relevant controllers, and they can send control signals back to the processor. A typical example might be a memory read command, to say that we want to read what's in the memory, or a memory write command to say that we want to write data back to the memory. Now collectively you might uh, hear the term system bus or front side bus and this is referring to the collection of the address bus, the data bus and the control bus in a system.